Hello there, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Chit Chat, and welcome back to another episode of the Super Mario theme park we are building in Planet Coaster. This episode is actually going to be a lot of fun. I've been looking forward to this one because this is going to be the start of using custom textures a lot more in this park. And uh, it really starts feeling like an actual theme park in my mind because we're going to start using custom textures to make planters, to make uh, snack machines and soda machines. And uh, eventually you're going to even see uh, merchandise in some of the stores. And then we're going to make custom signs and park maps and uh and ticket booths like the next few episodes are just so much fun to me just because i'm finally getting to really stretch out the art uh side of my brain and use that for planet coaster which in uh, some of the previous videos i did mention that if we ever do something that's really heavy ended um as far as animation is concerned that will be on my main channel uh chit chat show which you haven't seen that channel i do recommend you check it out that is where i post all of my uh art animation and voiceover content and uh, I haven't actually posted on that since I went on my break because I wanted to focus on one channel at a time. And I thought if I wasn't able to do one channel, then I shouldn't be able to do two. So I wanted to focus on one and then start working on the other once I kind of got, you know, more more footing, I guess. And uh, I think I think this channel is getting into a really good place. We've been growing um, pretty substantially, actually, in the last few months. And I think that's really, really cool and very exciting. So for all of you that are new to this channel, I welcome Welcome you. Thank you so much for being part of this small, awesome community. And uh, uh, while I'm giving out shout outs, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, to the Patreon supporters for still sticking with me. You all are awesome. I really appreciate it. And also uh, the new members of the Discord and just the Discord in general. Uh, there's a lot of really awesome creative people on there. And it's a lot of fun to see uh, not only the creativity, but people helping each other out, um, whether it's something technical or uh, someone's just trying to get an opinion on like their park or some art. I just think that's really, really cool. And that's the kind of community I would love to uh, build and continue to build. Um, and speaking of building, I will kind of give the rundown. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of just got overly excited and said like pretty much all the stuff that you're going to see in the next few episodes. Um, for this, uh, this episode specifically, we are going to be using the new park benches, um, which you probably already saw in the video. We're going to be adding more eating and snacking and drinking areas, which you see right now with the poison mushroom over in the Luigi's mansion area of the park, which I thought a poison mushroom would be kind of fitting. I just thought that was funny. So I decided to do that. Um, we're also going to be using custom textures to make new planters for the entry kind of path into the park. And then we're also going to be using custom textures to make vending machines, both a soda machine and a snack machine, which is also really exciting. Um, and then we're going to start kind of using uh, some ground plane textures to fill in the gaps that the uh, the roads just kind of left behind to really kind of flesh this out and bring a lot more color into the park, because I would imagine... Well, it's not going to be something to imagine for, you know, very, very long because an official Mario Park is coming to Universal, which is very exciting. And that means I just got to finish this before that happens. I, <laughs> that is a goal to set. I know these videos take a really long time for me to produce, and I do apologize for that. Like, if this was my full-time gig, believe me, I would be doing nothing but, like, this kind of stuff and art and animation. Like, that is, that is a dream. That would be so much fun to do. But, uh, unfortunately, the real world does have to come first. Uh, I got to pay the bills type of thing. Uh, but just know that I am trying my best to maintain a consistent schedule. Um, and because, uh, speaking of consistent schedules, because I did technically miss an upload uh, this past weekend, that is why this uh, this episode is a lot longer than the normal episodes. Uh, so definitely buckle up. Uh, the lap bar is coming down. The shoulder harness is, is there <laughs> because this is going to be a long episode. Uh, so grab your snacks. Uh, we're, we're building snack machines. And uh, I don't have a segue to get out of this, so I'm just going to go ahead and move on. <laughs> um, so you're also going to see me build a lot of fences and a lot of, you know, the boring stuff. And uh, I've thought about cutting this out of the video, but you know, I've, I, I got to build it, so might as well show the build process. Um, and then, yes, eventually there will be more animation as we move towards Luigi's Mansion. And I am excited for that still because that means that I'll be actually using that content over on the main channel. But the segue that I was actually trying to get to is if it is some uh, smaller art projects, if it's more, you know, just drawing something or creating a menu or something like that for the park, I will just do that on this channel because it's. It, I think it's, uh, it's easier to just focus those smaller projects on here and show a time-lapse of it, which we are actually going to cut to a time-lapse 
and very shortly, uh, probably in about 10 seconds, we're going to switch over into Photoshop where you're going to see me making custom textures for this planter, which really gave me a run for my money. I never thought making a planter would be so difficult, but you'll see I've already laid the groundwork. I'm like, all right, here we go. This is going to be a video screen and I only need to use half of it. So in about five, four, three, two, ah, I miscalculated. Well, anyways, now we're inside of Photoshop where I'm utilizing a brick texture that I've already made for the park, but we're going to be using this and making it a seamless texture. And then I'm only going to be using about half of the screen uh, space. So you see that I dropped in some pink there and that pink is just a guideline for me. So I know how far I need to sink the screen into the ground. Um, and the pink is just something to super, super stand out. So if there's any gaps in the path or if the ground plane's not level enough, I will immediately see it. Um, once I'm done kind of laying all these pieces throughout the park, I will go back and update that texture to just have the dark brown of the uh, brick. And then it'll look like, you know, it, it'll look like it's, it's seamless. Uh, the guideline is just so that I can consistently keep all the planters at the same level throughout the park. Um, that way, uh, if they are slightly off, that pink line will just show up really, really well. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of the process. Another thing I'm going to say too is, um, you'll notice that when I first drop in that texture, it looks really faded, almost milky. Um, and that is because when you save things out of Photoshop, you got to make sure to turn on the color profile when you go to save things out as a JPEG. If you don't, it's like an IEC color profile checkbox uh, when you go to save things out as a JPEG. If you don't click on that, your textures will come out really faded and milky like that. So if you've ever noticed, that's all you got to do. You just got to check that box when you go to save out as a JPEG and then you'll be good to go. And then of course you drop it into the user media under images, um, the same thing for video, but you also have to convert it into like a WebM format, which um, there's, there's things online you can look up. Um, I don't know specifically which one I used. I think I just modified um, an export setting inside of After Effects or Premiere. I can't remember because it's been a while since I've made a video for the park. Um, but as soon as I refresh my memory and go through the process, I'll be sure to let you all know. But I am without, there's without a doubt, it, it, you could probably find a tutorial online for that exact process. Uh, so I am going to use this opportunity. We're going to segue into a couple of questions on the Discord. That is right, I have a Discord. If you want to join, you can check out the link in the description of the video down below, but on the Discord, you will see under the heading, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up so I don't get that wrong. Under the heading, Ask Chit Chat, you will see a Planet Coaster sub channel where you can ask all your Planet Coaster related questions, and I will answer them here on the channel. All right, so we're gonna eh, we're gonna look at a couple of questions here. I'm actually looking through right now. This one got an insane amount of uh, feedback. Um, so Jer Jared RB or Pokey J, Pokey J, I hope I got your name right. Uh, what about a community park with community suggested rides? Um, so, sorry, there was a couple edit notes. I just want to make sure I got the actual question. So let me read that again. What about a community park with community suggested rides? That would actually be really, really, really cool. The only problem with that is um, because these videos take so long to produce, about eight to 10 hours, depending on how long I recorded for um, and how long it takes to render, um, it does eat up a good portion of the time that I have available to actually do things for the channel, for both channels eventually. So um, in order for me to dedicate that much time to something, I really have to be passionate about it. And I love video games. I worked in the video game industry. So video games are just something I enjoy. Um, and the Mario Park was just kind of an extension of the video game theme park because originally I did Sonic and then I did Pokemon and did, then I did Mario. And I wanted to kind of finish that project up uh, just because I didn't want to leave that unfinished. And then that idea kind of exploded out into this park. Um, so yeah, I would like to do that. And again, going back to what I said previously, if this was kind of like my full-time gig, I totally would. Um, but I kind of have to do some time management. Plus I gotta be, like I said, really, really interested in what I am creating. Um, if I were to do that in the future, it might be something I consider as a Patreon kind of uh, reward. Like at a certain tier, you could ask for uh, like something to be built in the park. I don't know. That's just an idea I'm throwing out there just off the top of my head. But again, really good suggestion. And maybe someday in the future, and if I have more time, I will do it because that would be really cool. And uh, definitely be a great way to involve 
all the chatterboxes. Another flip side of that is maybe we could do it where um, we have like competitions or we have creator spotlights. That would also be a lot of fun. So I would love to see more ways to involve all of you on the channel and on the Discord. So thank you so much for your suggestion. I really appreciate it. All right, JPS Ninja asks, Yes, I know everyone is doing this, but make a studios park. You can add any game, movie, television show you would like. That is actually a really cool suggestion, and I've been seeing a lot of the uh, top Planet Coaster creators doing that, and it's really cool to see, just because I'm a big fan of Universal Studios in general, so to see like actuals, like people making studio parks is a lot of fun to watch. Um, I have kind of been thinking, there's been a couple of park ideas. I've talked about them on the channel. Um, I would like to make just a couple of like one-off rides where it's not a full park, but it's just like a uh, mini ride. And uh, I want to do something for Over the Garden Wall. And I would eventually like to revisit a, a couple parks that I did before or a couple of attractions I did before that were Power Ranger themed. But something, if I ever do a video game theme park again, I want to do something that focuses on indie titles. Because recently I've been really enjoying like indie games in general, whether it be... Uh, I, I think Cuphead would be considered an indie, or it's Bendy, or it's Shovel Knight. Like, I really am digging the indie games just because they all have a very unique style, um, both in gameplay and in art. Um, and I think it would be really fun to build a park that kind of focuses on that. And speaking of artwork, we're now jumping back into Photoshop. Um, we are building our soda machine, and eventually we will also build a snack machine. But I wanted to start with this one first because the soda machines are slightly easier to make. Um, and I already had a pretty good idea in my head for exactly how I wanted it to look. So I figured we'd start with that one first and then get kind of like, I guess you could call it the brand quote unquote down. And then it would be easier to apply that to the snack machine. Now, one of the things that I had to start doing, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, was that I started using, um, some of the official Nintendo artwork just to help speed up the process. Cause originally I wanted to draw and animate like literally everything. And I realized that that's just going to take way too much time. So I am going to start using some of the official assets. I just want to be completely transparent about that. Um, but still a lot of the artwork and on the menus and how they're designed are still my own. So I kind of feel that I'm putting like a different spin on, on, um, on the Nintendo stuff. So I just wanted to be transparent about that. So no one's like, did you draw that mushroom? Like, no, I did not. <laughs> if I had a more time in my day, I totally would though. So thank you so much for your question, JPS Ninja. I super appreciate it. All right. So let us move to the next question. Let us see. All right. Alex Ottle asks, what theme park area in any park is your favorite and why? Example, Harry Potter Land, Tomorrowland, Future World, Fantasyland, Pandora, and the DC Universe. All right. That's actually a great question. Thank you so much. Um, I really, really enjoy... And it's not even something I'm like a super huge fan of. I, I really like it, but I wouldn't like consider myself hardcore. And I, I'm sure I've mentioned this in the past, but I really like the Harry Potter area in the Universal Studio, both Universal Parks, um, the one in California and the one in Florida. I think it's the only two that have the Harry Potter land attached to them. Um, I love it just because it, 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 it immerses you so much into that world where you don't feel like you're in a theme park. You feel like you're actually there. And it's just, it's mind blowing. Like all the little details that they put into those areas of the park. It's like, I, I know it's cheesy, but it's magical. It's genuinely magical because, um, just the, the interactivity and the, the scenes, the sights, like you just feel like you're there. And I know they have like those interactive wands that you could use super expensive wands that you can use in the park. And it'll also like make things, uh, happen in certain areas. And like, I, I just think that's so cool. And I know as soon as star Wars, the star Wars, I think edge of the galaxy, uh, I think is what they're calling it over at Disneyland is finished. That's probably going to be my new one. <laughs> as soon as that's done, I want to go there. Cause I'm going to lose my mind. I love Star Wars. So when that's done, that's probably going to become my new favorite. Uh, just the, the, the Star Tours area over at uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Um, it's a bit more themed out than the Star Tours area over at, uh, over at Disneyland. Um, it's, it's just like, I think they had like a, it, the last time I was there, they had like a giant AT, AT walker. And I'm just like, that is amazing. <laughs> so when I get to like walk onto the millennium Falcon, my, my mind, the, 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 my, my inner child is just going to be like, Oh my gosh, this is everything I've ever wanted and more. <laughs> so yeah, that'll probably definitely be it. Uh, there's plenty of places I would love to visit the Pandora world over at, um, animal kingdom would be amazing. Um, but I haven't been to Florida in many, many years 
Um, and I, I've seen I've seen walkthroughs and videos and stuff like that, and the park is just beautiful. Um, the bioluminescence effect that they they put into it at night. It's like Disney's really been up in their game lately, um, and I think they're doing that because of Harry Potter, the Harry Potter land, because you know Universal set the bar, and Disney's like, oh no, you don't. We're gonna up you. We're gonna do not only one better, but two better, and probably even three better. Because uh, recently they also announced that there's gonna be a Marvel like an actual Marvel area in the Disney parks. And I think one of them is going to be at, um, at, uh, um, I almost said animal kingdom. I didn't mean to say that it just, that was the first thing that popped into my head, but it's going to be at Disney's California adventure, which makes sense. Cause they have the guardians of the galaxy ride there. So it would make sense to have a more of a Marvel themed experience there. And I don't think they could do one in Florida just because there's the Marvel area at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure, which is also one of well, an, an area that I really, really like just because I'm a huge comic book nerd. Um, so it's really cool to see those characters um, in, in, in the real world. You know, it's just it's fun. And that was like the first experience um, of seeing like superheroes, you know, in the real world and not just in the comic book pages. So I remember like seeing like the Spider-Man ride. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. And the Hulk roller coaster. I'm like, oh, that's way too scary. Because back when I first went to Islands of Adventures, I was definitely afraid of roller coasters. Crazy, right? Chad was afraid of roller coasters at one point in his life. And it was actually the Incredible Hulk and California Screamin' over at uh, Incredible Hulk at Universal Studios Island Adventure and California Screaming over at um, at um, uh, Disney's California Adventure that actually got me over my fear of roller coasters. And I've been a fan ever since. Uh, which, speaking of, actually, as I'm talking about Disneyland and California Adventure, I am going there soon as of recording this video. I'm really excited. I'm, I'm super excited because it's been a while since I've gone and... Uh, need a vacation like hardcore <laughs> i need a vacation uh been nose to the grind working my butt off um and it's just gonna be nice to spend time uh outside of arizona spend time with the girlfriend and just have have fun at disneyland and it's gonna be fun to see all the things that are under construction because california screaming is also currently being transformed into the incredicoaster i believe is the name they gave for it um and that's gonna be really cool uh, I'm gonna miss California Screaming because I love that ride. I love like the rock and roll, cheesy carnival aspect to it. I just, I loved it. Um, for one spring bake, they actually changed it over to be a Red Hot Chili Peppers all around the world song, uh, which was kind of like, it was interesting. I liked Red Hot Chili Peppers. I just wasn't expecting it. So I'm like, oh, okay, they changed the soundtrack to it. Very interesting. Um, and uh, they also changed it to Higher Ground, the cover of Higher Ground that Red Hot Chili Peppers did. Um, for uh, Space Mountain, which was a little bit more uh, abstract because they added a bunch of like strobe lights and stage lights to it. I'm like, this is not Space Mountain anymore. <laughs> so I'm glad that was a temporary thing as much as I like the, the Chili Peppers. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited. And uh, we're jumping back into uh, Photoshop now for the snack machine, which I'm not clever, so it's just called Power Snacks. <laughs> and I do actually use a picture of the front of a real snack machine. And I'm like, I am not going to make all those snacks individually. It would have been a really fun Easter egg to have like all the different snacks actually say something. But that's just such a small detail that I'm like, you know, what? there's plenty of other things I want to add in this park. Um, for instance, we're going to do a full menu for the Bowser's Barbecue because I've already got some great suggestions for that. So that's going to be like a full menu. And then after this episode, there's a couple of more things that we're going to use, especially for the stores. Uh, we're going to do some merchandising for the stores and fill those out because the Luigi's Mansion like store that you exit out into exit through the gift shop um, is very bland and plain looking right now. So we are definitely going to up the ante and fill out that uh that that uh that shop at least a little bit there's some other things that i need to make still um i would like to make some like actual 3d objects and not just texturize everything and do it like just flat textures um but for the next episode i believe it's the next episode we're doing um textures for that shop um yeah the uh, snack machine gave me a bit more trouble because i remembered all they've got buttons because you actually have the dial and all that stuff so uh, this one took me a little bit longer to make and I've been thinking also on top of like Patreon, which we talked about earlier, it would might it might also be fun to 
um, have access to a lot of these files and how I built them and make that available through Patreon. So if that's something any of you would be interested in, just let me know. I want to add more reasons for people to check out the Patreon um, just because it helps me out and it helps out the channel um, just with like music licensing and obviously I have to pay for Adobe and all that stuff. So it'd be really cool to get um, the Patreon and just have more reasons to join and more rewards. So um, if that sounds like a good idea, I would love to do it. And I could also when I start the, the art channel up again, I could also ap apply the same thing, you know, like offer, you know, a look into the, the Photoshop files when I draw something and just throwing that idea out there. So just let me know if that sounds good. So now that we've obviously done the soda machines, we're going to add the snack machines right to it, utilizing the television screens because they have a bit of like a bevel on them. Um, and it just makes them look more mechanical. So I like that uh, versus just the flat screens that we have also access to. And uh, it's just, it, I don't know, like it's such a small detail, but it's really cool just to see art in the the theme park now. And I, I know it's silly. I just I was so excited when I started working on these. Like, yeah, finally, we got some like art and stuff in here and it makes it feel so much more believable in my in my mind you know like it's starting to really get fleshed out and you'll see in the next few episodes um we start working on like i said we start working on some storefronts and some like little small carts that uh sell goods and then eventually we'll move into actually making an entryway to the park and we use some artwork there and some like ticket booths and prices and stuff and i it just I'm, I, I'm excited just talking about it, so I can't wait for you all to actually see it. So the next few episodes, in my mind, are going to be really fun to watch, and I do genuinely hope you enjoy them. All right, so I think I have time for one more question uh, here in the Discord. Big Fat Waffle asks, what are some tips on making figures from art pieces? So... Thank you for your question. I actually really do enjoy making the characters out of the, uh, the the geometric shapes. And I went to school for art and animation and there was 3D modeling a part of that. And so I think having kind of that, that 3D mindset really does help. Um, not terribly much, just because it's very, um, it, the, the, the things we have access to in Planet Coaster like make characters is very limited. Uh, mainly because of the shape differences in the actual shapes, you know, like the sphere one to two to three, like the shape variance of those spheres or the geometric objects in general is a quite quite the leap between them. It would be, I've said it before, it'd be wonderful to have a scaling tool. So at least for the geometric objects. So once you like made a character, you could like shrink it down. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I know they couldn't apply that to everything because that would just be like a ridiculously big uh, feat of, 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 of craftsmanship and programming, I'm sure. But if it was just like the geometric thing, so like I could make something as big as I wanted to and get all these little details and scale it down, oh, that would be amazing. But because you can't do that, what I recommend is when you see a character or you're thinking of a character, just try and break them up into their most simplistic forms. Um, I always try and start with like a base, whether it's going to be a square or an oval or a sphere, and you can always add more to it. Like if you look at how I built uh, Kamek or if you look how I built Luigi, you know, they all started off with a very simplistic base and then I just kept adding more and more detail. So try and just look at something and then just think about it in its most simplistic form. And I guarantee you, you'll, you'll start to like really start building out some more complicated things. So always start simple and build from there. And don't be worried to like block out the entirety of the characters. Sometimes I focus on the face if I know that's going to be super, super important. But other times I'll block out the whole form. So if they're doing a pose, I know exactly what it's going to look like. And you can always edit and modify as you go. So that is the last question on Discord again. Thank you all so much for asking those questions. I really appreciate it. And that is going to bring us to the end of this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I super appreciate it. And as always, I will chat with you on the next episode.